platform. You want me to talk? Get ready for basketball here at Queensboro Community College. It's going to be the alumni game this afternoon. I'm Joe Massey. David Russell a little under the weather, so he won't be with us today, but should be interesting. Uh, he's uh, still young men. Come back to Queensboro every year, and they uh, show off uh, what they can still do. Here they are with the ball. The red team gets it outside to Mr. Bravo, who always seems to come in here and give us some thrills. Michael Bravo, a former Tiger. Everybody on the court is a former Tiger, but right back comes the black team, and that was Eric Light. Eric finished his career more recently than Michael Bravo. They both had the same result in the opening minute here, uh, both field goals. We'll run down some of the other players on the court as we go along. One that has the ball right now, one of the finest players the school has produced in uh, Jeff Boone, number eight. Now they go on the baseline for a jumper, no good, and the rebound is cleared right back out by the red team. Red team a little bit older. They were here a little bit before their black uh, competitors. Here's a jumper by Bravo from outside. No good. He hit the first field goal of the game. By the way, that was a three, so it's three to two. And now a basket the other way by Light makes it four to three as the Tigers with the black uniforms go in front. Now, after this game here today, the, uh, the current Queensboro squad will take on a compilation of these two teams, and inside goes Bravo. And we'll be calling his name a few times in this game. Michael Bravo, I spoke to him before the game, as Teron Simpson comes back and nets a three and makes it a seven to five ball game. Teron played here around the 2002 season. Jumper from the corner is no good as they come the other way, and that is going to cause a whistle to be blown. It was Anwar Bowling who took the shot. There was a little pushing out underneath, and a foul was detected. So it'll go back to the red. Bravo with the ball. Bravo feeds it inside. Nice pass, no conversion, but hanging in to get the rebound and putting it up and in. And the score is tied at seven. Down the baseline all the way and no basket that time. Comes back the other way. The red and the black tied up. Try a long shot from the right side. That won't go. That was taken by Bowling again. He was always a uh, outside shooter when he played here at Queensboro. And while bowling played for Tom Sinekson, as have all these players here, and there's the ball loose on the floor, picked up by the black team, and Teron Simpson passes, beautiful passing, and the black gets it on the board. And that was Joshua Williams, who ended up with the basket, and that makes it a nine to seven ball game. They'll have another opportunity, and going all the way in this time is Williams, but he can't convert. And the red right back. Jumper from outside is no good. And they'll get the rebound and they'll bring it right back outside. 9-7, the black leading. Red comes up with the rebound inside and backing his way in and trying to get some kind of shot off with Keith Keogh, a very strong player. And a beautiful pass by Jeff Boone, getting it inside for the bucket. And that makes it an 11-7 game as Boone put it right on the money for the bucket there to uh, David uh, Monde. I was able to score. Red team has the ball, 11-7. They are the visitors in this game. Keo got blocked. Keo got it back. Keo puts it up. No good. Got it back again and can't score. It's one thing, he is a very hard competitor, is Keith Keo, and he always was. 
drive the other way and trying to get the shot up was Williams and he had it blocked. And this is Bowling lining it up. The three won't go. It jumped out of the basket. Anwar Bowling has tried a couple of threes, has not made them. Here's Jeff Boone. That was one of his signature moves when he really was a ball player. And the jumper from the corner won't go, and it's taken off by the red. Well, we've gone a little bit without a bucket, but there's one right there to make it an 11-9 ball game. A little pull-up jumper is getting it up court quickly, the red team, and they nail one, and they make it now a 11-9 ball game. And we have a timeout off that bucket. I do not have a number 11 on my uh, roster. We'll try to pick up the name of that young man who just hit the jump shot. Well, it's 11-9. This is the alumni game between the slightly advanced, we'll put it that way, Queensboro Club against the, um, the newer people that came out of Queensboro, and they'll bring it out of the backcourt. Here is Clarence Amengo. Uh, Clarence is currently the coach of the Queensboro squad here on the men's side, playing with Teron Simpson in the backcourt. Ball goes back out to Amengo. A little move over to Simpson, who shoots it from three, and he won't get it. The ball is called out of bounds off the red as uh, Boone was able to throw it back in and hit it off one of the player's legs. And they pitch it in, got a quick shot up, and Boone follows, no good. Boone follows, scores. Jeff Boone not only played here at uh, Queensboro Community College, but he finished his career at York College. And he spent two years there, and York won the championship both years. And I had a good chat with Jeff before the game, and he is now in the construction business. He uh, puts it up from three, no good. As you can see, he has the body for it. Here's a jumper outside, a Mingo, no good. Well, one thing, Clarence and Mingo, and that is his name, Clarence. He, as coach of Queensboro this year, will be looking to put some more wins on the board. They brought in some new ball players. Here's a Mingo with the ball now, leading the break and getting it ahead for the two. Good break, and uh, scoring was Eric Light, who was slightly behind when they played their Queensboro careers. 15 to nine, that makes it a six point edge for the black team. They've had a little bit of the edge here in the early going, and Amengo might have gotten hit going down the left of the lane. They're gonna call a push on that. So it'll be thrown back in by the black clad uh, Club, uh, which is one of the uh, alumni squads participating here in this first game. Jeff Boone going to try a long three-pointer there, but it won't go. And the rebound was snatched in by Bowling for the red clad team. <clears throat> you see a couple of these fellows are wearing a Coach Atkinson jersey for top today. Billy Atkinson, a former coach and assistant here at Queensboro. There's a miss on the jumper on the right, and the Red will get the ball. One of the nicest human beings you ever met, Billy Atkinson, uh, passed away a few years ago while he was uh, the head coach of Queensboro, but he spent many years on the bench with Tom Sinnickson, who is here today, by the way. Tom Sinnickson, who won uh, several titles in the community college ranks for the CUNY when he was with the Queensboro Tigers. In fact, Tom has a seat on the bench right now. And I think Tom would be willing to come out and play a few minutes if they give him the opportunity. Well, the score remains 15 to nine and the red team will be inbounding it from underneath the basket. And they'll bring it up court. The black uh, team, as we said, has had the better of the play so far. They get the ball across. Here's a long jumper and it won't go and Boone clears it and gets it right back out and they'll run it back the other way. 
black team trying to run wherever they can. Ball goes back out to Boone. He's on the three-point line. Over to Simpson, who fires from out there. No good. By the way, Tehran followed Jeff Boone over there to York College, and they both won those championships as teammates. There's a long lead at Connects and two points again for the black team. They've done very well on the break. That's four for Eric Light. And so far, they've had the better play. They're leading at 17 to nine. Bowling trying to take care of that, and he finally gets a three. Bowling had tried a couple of them, and he couldn't get it to go. Again, they try to break it the other way. Uh, the black team, as we said, has some fellas who uh, are a little bit younger, and they are running the ball a little more at the beginning. Ball goes on the left wing. Now they'll get a look at it from outside. Ben Chapahan is uh, checked in for his first time, and there they go again on the break, and the foul is committed. By the way, Ben is coach of LaGuardia, coached his team to the Community College Championship in the CUNY this past year. We'd like to congratulate him. Uh, yeah, got a quick chance to ask him about that before the game. They lost in uh, the second round of the uh, of the tournament that takes place after, after the CUNY tournament. First one is good at the free throw line for Williams, who now has three points in the game, and that increases the black lead to 18 to 12, and Williams perfect at the line with both free throws. We were kidding before the game, some of the guys and I, about shooting the free throws, and I was asking them what some of their percentages were when they played. Here's more than a free throw. That was a long jump by Choppenham. Couldn't get it to go. And they'll clear it back the other way. And Machado gives it inside. Beautiful pass by Big Machado, number 18. And they get two out of it. Unselfish play. And that was Choppenham who put it in. So it's 19-14, but hey, Carl Lomingo's going to take care of that with a three-point shot. Carl said, no problem. And it's 22-14. to 14. They've got their biggest lead now of eight points. And I'm getting some assistance up here, and I'd like to thank the young ladies that are helping me. And we're going to get those numbers for you. Just Fuller guy, he changed to the red team, so it's still the same number. Fuller is number 11, and he hit the shot before. Yeah, and then this is a new guy that's on the red team, his number's 14. Uh, how do you say the last name? I have no idea. Okay, Iowa, number 14. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. 22 to 16 now as we get a little bit of help up here. We're working solo today. There's a jumper from the foul line, and Eric Light Right, has it going on, he has six points. 22 to 24, make it to 16. It's an eight point lead for the black team. There's Machado, one of the veterans and a real veteran out here. He, in fact, played with uh, Tom Sinek's in uh, maybe his best team of all time. He was a freshman with the uh, 1996 team and then he came back for 97 and they won again he didn't get a lot of playing time in 96 but i was talking to him and i was surprised that he was there because he's he doesn't look that old there's a drive down the baseline none of us do now the red will get the ball back but you know 96 you're only talking uh, technically 20 years ago wow <laughs> That is a long time ago. 24 to 18, red team trying to do something here and they overthrow the ball for Keogh. That was chopping him who was trying to get it in low. So they cannot convert on their opportunity. And back the other way goes Clarence Amengo and someone got a piece of him as he was going through there. And he'll end up at the line. Chance to increase the black lead. Chapahan. First free throw by Mingo, no good though. 
Now, interestingly, um, I told you that Teron Simpson and Jeff Boone went over to York College in Jamaica, Queens. That's over there in Jamaica, Queens. And they won those two consecutive titles, but they, uh, they had to go through Carl Lomingo to get there. He was playing with Baruch. He was playing with the Baruch College Bearcats. And there's Machado missing a little hook inside. It's 25 to 18. The black team trying to take advantage, but light shot hit rim and jutted off. And here comes the red team with chopping in. Going all the way in and he won't get it. Black team with another opportunity on the break and light scores and now they uh, increase their lead. 27-18, I was going to say it might be their first double digit lead, but uh, just one short of it. It's a nine point advantage now. So the Reds going to get a substitution into the ball game. Gonna bring bowling in there, and uh, there's a, another miss. They're having a tough time field goal shooting wise. And the lane is wide open and all the way down, and not getting it to hang was Joshua Williams. Here's a three by bowling. He has one in the game, now he has two of them. So bowling is the leading scorer for the Red with six points, two three pointers. Simpson always did like to shoot the three, but that one was well off. Simpson, uh, he even shot the three when he played at York College. He's a left-hander, played point guard, but see on that team, they had two point guards actually, and they were both very good point guards with the York College team. After he left here at Queensboro. There's a little bit of a hook by Keo. No good. Saved by Bowling. And Bowling goes in there to score. And he has basically provided a lot of their scoring. 27 to 23 gets him within four. Bowling with eight points, saving the play there. So this is about the time of the game with 7.52 to go in the first half that they start getting heated up and those old fires start to burn in a game like this. And there's Keo trying to go all the way through. And Clarence Amengo took one for the team right there. Offensive foul. The leading scorer for the Black with eight points is Eric Light. The leading scorer for the, uh, for the Red is Bowling with eight points. See what goes on from here. It's a four point lead for the home team. They are the black clad team from the Queensboro past. And there's a miss outside. Gives the red another opportunity to get closer. Machado left of the key, fakes, throws it in low. A little whirl around shot, not as good as bowling. Kind of maneuvered his way in there, and it's 27 to 25. Simpson, way off. He's been way off with the last two outside jumpers. And the ball will go over to the red team. Now the red team has a chance to tie it up. Is uh, Teron Simpson not shooting the three very well right now? Machado had the ball inside the lane and they tried to knock it away from behind and committed the foul. And that was Simpson. And will be thrown in again by the red. It's uh, only three team fouls by the black. Fake at the head of the key by Fuller. I remember Fuller very well now. I couldn't pick out the number because I didn't have the name before, but that's Fuller, number 11. And a beautiful handoff by Amengo into his assistant coach, Teron Simpson, to get the basket. And if there are current Queensboro Tigers here, and there are in the stands watching the game downstairs, that's the way you do it, guys, uh, between the assistant coach and the, uh, and the regular coach, the uh, head coach, Carl Amengo, 
and Teron Simpson. And instead of diagramming a play, you could show them right on the court. And Chopin and a powerful move to get the two back for the red. And Ben scores, he has four. 29-27. Chapahan getting that one to go. The uh, pass did not fool Machado there, but it's garnered back by Light, and Light gives it inside for the two. Eric Light has 10 points now. Actually, that steal was made by Williams, and he fed it to Light very nicely. Gets that lead back up to four, so give the two to Light, who was the leading scorer for the black-clad Tigers. Machado, a nice move. Oh, well, he probably made that one in his heyday. That ball got away, and it's set up court for a quick shot right of the key, but it won't go. Red team back the other way, and the leading scorer for them in this first half has been bowling. He's number one handling the ball. Chop a hand, won't get it. And here's a Mingo, no. So we, a little helter skelter play here, and down the lane went bowling into two people. He went bowling into them, that's what he did, and he gets the offensive foul. Stays a four point game, and here comes Tom Simpson onto the court now. Now let's see what uh, let's see what Tom has in his repertoire here. The former coach of all of these fellas when they won their titles, and I'm going to get into all of that in a little bit. I have it all down here. And Mingo inside. They hand it off, and the jump shot is no good at the head of the key, and a wide open shot that uh, Light couldn't put down. Light has led the scoring here in the first half, but not that time. And a beautiful behind the back pass from Machado to his former teammate, and they won't get it the other way. Horatio Pachardo. Thirty-one twenty-seven. The black team has the ball. They try to pass it inside. The ball got ricocheted away. And Bowling tries to add on this point total, and that was a pretty move by Bowling there. And he has twelve points, and that causes a timeout to be called. And they are uh, chattering again at each other, which is a good sign because it shows you they're getting into the game. But right now it's thirty-one to 29. Well, take a little bit of a break here. 3.56 to go in the first half, and we've seen some pretty good basketball to this point. And it'll be black ball when we continue. And now their lead has been sliced to two, so we'll see what they can do. By the way, uh, number 18 on the red is Pachardo. Here's a drive down the baseline, and he hung it short that time. Had the move made, but he couldn't get the basket. And the red team comes up with a corner jump. Good. And he showed us a nice game when he was in here last year, Paul Santos. And Santos has now tied up the game at 31. A little guard who does some good things. There's a strip away by Pachardo. Tied up at 31. The red team on the move again. And they get it inside to chop a hand, and he got fouled trying to go up. Now they'll look for the lead for the, I think the first time in the game. Yes, because uh, Queensboro came out on the black side with that three-pointer, and then uh, they uh, had the lead most of the first half. 
So here is Ben Chop ahead, and he's able to get that free throw. 32-31. Ben has five points, and as Tom Senexson was telling me downstairs before, they, they now have uh, Queensboro. Most of the coaches in the community college ranks are now Queensboro alumni. So they're doing well in that avenue now. There's a drive on the baseline by, by Amengo. He, he wanted a foul call, but none was made. Ball went up court. Black team brings it back. They're now down by two. And Amengo almost hands it off in the lane to Williams, who was about four feet away from the basket, and he got fouled on that. Good play by Carl. During his playing days, Carl was a driving type of gentleman. Hey, the last championship in the community college ranks that they won on the men's side here, Carl Amendo and Teron Simpson were uh, teammates on that team, by the way. And they beat a Hosto squad on that night that was just starting out. They just had put a team together at Hostos in the community college ranks. There's a drive and it'll land an offensive foul. And it certainly was. Williams went in there with the shoulder and knocked over the player in the red. Well, anyway, that team uh, for Hostos that they beat in the final down at Borough of Manhattan College was a team that uh, then went on and kind of dominated the community college ranks for the next four or five years. Three ball right there. That makes it 36-32, the red team is pulled back out by four. 2.22 to go in the first half, this is Joe Massey. As David Russell takes the day off today, he feeling under the weather. And this is a time of year when you can't afford to meddle around with type of illnesses. Hey, underneath, picking it off was Keo there. And the red team is now surged in front by six. Good job by the Queensboro red team here for the um, alumni game in the men's side. Nice hanging shot, but it wouldn't go with the left hand. Chopperhan, no, long rebound, and following it out was Williams, and Williams will go all the way to the bucket and go strong, and he gets fouled. They needed that type of move uh, as the black team has fallen behind by six points. You, you always like that type of move because if you don't get the basket, you're probably going to get fouled. Williams with his first good at the line. And by the way, he's four out of five from the line and he is the second leading scorer for the black team in this first half. The first leading scorer is Eric Light. There's a miss. 38-33, Bowling knows what to do with that nice pass from Chopperhan. And Bowling is the leading scorer in the game. He has 14. Now Domingo comes right back. Now they say, uh, let's, say uh, let's get on our horses and go, and that's what they're doing. The ball knocked out of bounds there. So again, we're more at a fast pace style as the red team has the ball. Chopperhan with his back turn to Amengo. Amengo played guard. He's playing Chopperhan right now. And Chopperhan, very strong, backs his way in there, but he can't get it to go. He uh, used his, uh, his bulk against Amengo. There you go. Nice pass inside to Eric Light, who head faked and got the shot up. And now brings the black team back within three, 40 to 37. Now after this game, the 
current Queensboro squad will play the uh, alumni. And that's always fun. And there's Boone picking the pocket, and he'll go ahead of the field. Jeff Boone. So it's 40 to 39. 13 seconds to go in the first half, and we have a foul that'll stop play. By the way, Tom Sinnickson, who Coach Boone was telling me as a freshman, he was a 6'2", 170-pound guard here. You can see he's not a guard anymore. And then in his second year, he, uh, no, he was a 6'2", 170-pound guy who played between forward and center. That's what he was as a freshman. Then in his second year, he was a guard at that size, and he averaged 20 points a game. There's the miss, the red trying to scramble up a shot, but it won't make it. And there's still .5 seconds to go in the first half with the uh, red team holding on to a slim 40 to 39 lead. And that'll just about do it right there. As that long inbound never made it up court. So the red leading it 40 to 39 in the uh, yearly alumni game here at Queensboro Community College, and uh, they, they put on a good show for uh, slightly older men. Anwar Bowling had 14 points to lead the red in that first half, and Eric Light had 12. And we'll run down some of the other scoring when we come back. Uh, always fun to have the, these two teams participate every year and to see these Fellas, the first thing is you walk in the gym and you see them. And then you're happy you see them and then you talk to them and you bring back a couple of the old time memories. And then they get on the court and they play basketball for real. We will take a break right here. We'll see what they have in the tank for real in the second half. Right now it's 40 to 39. The red team garnered in the lead, and they are still leading it as we go to halftime. We'll be back. Well, we're back at Queensboro Community College's version of Old Timers Day here as uh, we go right into second half action, and it's 40 to 39. The red team currently holding the lead, and they missed the first shot of the second half, so it'll go back to the black team for their first possession. And first half uh, leading scorers we'll give you in a moment. As the team of the black uh, t-shirts moves it around and the pass was broken up by Bowling of the red. Anwar Bowling gets an opening and goes all the way through. He has been very impressive indeed today as Bowling. Back the other way comes uh, Williams, and he has had a very good game with eight points. Now it's 42 to 41, so we're right back close again. Bowling, by the way, had scored points 15 and 16. There's a jumper in the lane by Eric Light, no good. Red team has the lead and the ball. We're just into the second half. Ben Chopahan, that is the way you say it. Number eight, directing things outside. And Chopahan, teammates have it knocked away. And there goes Simpson on a little hesitation move down around the five inch mark. And he got slapped going up for the shot. That is Chopapan, number eight for the red team. He is playing with Anwar Bowling, who had a very good first half, as we said, the scoring leadership with 16 points. And they have Pichardo in the middle, who's the big fella. The Simpson, able to put in the first free throw there. Ron Simpson, six points, going for number seven, and he ties the game, but can't put the black team in the lead. So it's still 42-42. The other player on that red squad is Junior Fuller, number 11. There's a jumper, no good, and the rebound comes all the way out. And 
knocked over the light, lights pass, is loose on the floor, and Fuller is able to come up with it. Fuller gets bumped as he's going down to the right side. Who committed the foul? Nobody wants, uh, wants to take uh, responsibility for the fouls today, of course. There's bowling. No good. Good position inside by Chopapon, and he went back up and he got fouled. He is very strong. Ben is only about 6'2", uh, 6'2", six two, six two, about that size. Uh, Jeff Boone is only about 6'3", but they both have very strong bodies. And they're both wearing number eight today on the court, by the way. One on the red, one on the black. First one is good. By the way, I uh, announced uh, the York College games at the time Jeff was playing, and I always used to call him Big Jeff Boone. Very funny. I, I, I made up that name for him, that moniker, Big Jeff Boone, and then fans used to show up at the game with signs Big Jeff or Big Boone. Here's Boone with the ball. He goes inside and he banks it off the glass. Four points now for Jeff, and it's 44 all, and a ball goes astray and it's picked off by Eric Light, who goes all the way in and got fouled by Pachardo. He was just about to make the move to the basket, and Pichardo thought he had the ball there. So Light will shoot two. It's Boone, Teron Simpson, Eric Light. Sometimes you have to be aware that you might say Todd Light. There was a fellow who played sports with that name. They're on the court right now with uh, Phil Mondi. And Williams, Joshua Williams for the black team. And the black has the lead back now, 45-44 as the free throw was made. Pachardo outside. He's always looking to pass the ball, good team player. And there's Fuller registering a two. 47-45, the guests. They give him a three on that. The guests are back up. Fuller with his first three. So the red team goes back in front. And they have the ball right back. And Chopapon with it. In the corner to Fuller. Fuller sets, doesn't shoot, makes a really great pass. And they go out to bowling. And the ball jumped out of the basket on him. He had hit two threes in the first half. 16.39 to go, we're just into the second half. It's a two-point lead for the red team. Simpson can't put it in for the black, and Light goes inside and had his shot deflected. Chip upon. Well, Ben not only directed his LaGuardia squad to the uh, championship as a coach last year, but he's having a very good return today to Queensboro. And now it's a bigger lead, 51 to 45, and a timeout will be called on the alumni sideline for the black squad. Here we are again. We got another timeout. We're being helped very ably by your name? Christina. <laughs> Christina, thank you. Okay, um, from here down is the Tigers. Yes. They just wanted me to get the numbers and their names for you so you could have them. Thank you. Okay. That's coming up next. The, uh, in the, mm -hmm. the regular Tigers numbers are here. Thank you. Yep. So the, after this game, and she reminds me, the alumni then join up to play the current Tiger squad. And that's always a lot of fun because you want to see how well the young men can do against a slightly older competition. And in some cases, older competition. Now well, Queensboro has the ball. Tom Sinekson saw a, a minute before. I think he was on the court. Here's Williams going all the way in and missing, and the red team wants to add on to their lead. I mean, they can feel it right now. They, they size it up. Bowling can't hit the shot, and the ball is free on the baseline, and they say it's still a red ball. Still red ball. 
Now I am personally up here sitting and I'm, I'm watching to see if Jeff Boone can turn it on at any time. He used to be a spark plug. Well, he made a block right there. Just as I mentioned it. 51 to 45. Here's the drive all the way through. Good job to keep control of the ball for Williams. And he got fouled as a result. The leading scorer in this game is Bowling with 16 points, Light 12, Williams 8 on the black squad, Amengo 6 on the black squad, and back to the red, 6 for Chapaham. And there's the free throw good by Williams, making it 51 to 47 as he made both of them. So the red team's lead is reduced to four. Bowling trying to add to his point total, and he does. 18 points for Anwar Bowling. Six point lead. It's kind of the Williams Bowling show right now as Williams goes all the way through and misses. Light picks it off, hands it back into Williams. He got fouled and throw Light in there too. So it's Williams, Light, and Bowling who are uh, kind of controlling the ball game right now. And uh, they are the most recent graduates out on the court. First one is good. Now, I told you I was going to tell you about the way the Tigers have done things through the years. I haven't had an opportunity as Williams makes both 12 points. Well, you know, I'll shorten up the whole story and tell you they pulled in several community college championships from 1994 or so to about 2004. And they have a lot of banners hanging up as a result. Pichardo missed from way outside on that. 53 to 49. And is that going to be an offensive foul? They say it is not. Score the hoop for light. Pichardo tried to uh, play a little old school ball there and pick up the foul, but it did not work. And in fact, I think Carl Domingo's giving him a hard time about that, about taking the spill. <laughs> Here's the free throw, good. Williams has 13 points, and that move has uh, made it a close game again. It's 53 to 52 for the Red Squad. David Russell normally with us today, right from the get-go at Alumni Day, but they were uh, uh, under the weather with, I believe, the flu. Chapapan can hit from outside. So all our best go to David, and uh, he'll be back. He is a trooper. There's a jumper from the corner, no good, and the rebound snatched off the floor and all the way to the bucket with the left hand and scoring once again is Williams. And he has propelled himself into the scoring lead now with 15 points in the game. Timeout will be taken by the Red. They had a lead coming into the second half. Their lead had dwindled at the end of the first half and now they're back in front by one. The, the black team. So we've had good basketball, good show, guys look good. And now maybe I can go through uh, a little bit of that uh, Queensboro history if I can get it up here in my book. Here we are. They made a run. Queensboro from 1994 under Jerry Powell to 2003 with Tom Sinnickson. And we'll tell you what they did during that time. Here's Boone trying to make one of his patented moves. It sends it in the corner and Light knocks it in. So as I said, it's been Light, Williams, and Bowling have been doing the scoring now. And it's 57, uh, 56, 53, the black team, and the red team comes back and they put two in. 56, 55. 
all the way goes Williams down the baseline and the ball was knocked away from him. It'll stay with the black. So from 94 to 203, they won championships in 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, and 203. Titles in the CUNY. And then they went on and they played, of course, in uh, ECAC play and did well in those tournaments. 58-57 as the red team comes back off that Boone basket. Here's Boone again lining it up. Got it. Jeff Boone from deep outside. He's got nine points. And that elevates the lead to 61 to 57. Snap pass into Keo and Keo with the spinning move and he scores. Keith Keo, double K. Makes it 61 to 59. The red team right back within two. Boy, Williams has really gone to work. Joshua Williams now with 17 points hitting that one, and it's a four point lead again. That's for Light. Light had to get it on the fly, and he couldn't roll it over the rim. Iwoo the other way. Outside to Bowling. Bowling missed. Has a few threes tonight and a lot of points. Bowling with 18 points is the scoring leader in this game, but his red team is down by four, and there's 11.48 on the clock, and the red team will be putting it in. This is Joe Massey here. And in the second game, the Alumni Day, it'll feature the... Uh, <laughs> As Chapapan tries to get uh, the call on that, but he won't. Ball deflected off him. Four point lead, and that gives the black uh, outfit a chance to go up a little further. Light in the corner off the catch with the three try. No good. It's chipped and grabbed finally, and then traveling is going to be called on a tough effort by Pavel Santos, but he did take an extra step there as he caught the ball and then tried to get it forward. So it goes back to the uh, black clad alumni team and Boone trying another three and he gets it. And I believe several minutes ago I said I want to see if Jeff Boone goes off at any time, and he certainly has. 66-59. He's given them a seven-point lead now. Fuller. He was a dynamo with Fuller at one time here. That ball goes up court and it's out of bounds. I told you about all those championships in the CUNY, 94, 95. 96, 97, 98, 203. And then Sinekson, as coach, Tom Sinekson, he had another chance in, I believe it was 204, and he lost to the Borough of Manhattan Community College, or 205, one of those years. There's Keogh going inside with Robert Alexis, who was not here today, and it was a terrific player. So that was the last shot he had at a title, and he didn't pull it in. Two shots coming up for Keo, trying to move the red team a little closer. First one is good. And then Tom gave up the coaching ranks and, uh, and reigns. And as I said, his assistant, longtime assistant, Billy Atkinson took over. 66, 62 off the free throw there. Boone, looking at it from three again, tries to make a little bit of a tricky dribble, lost the ball, it's gathered in by Williams who can't get it, and then it's all the way to the sideline and it's going to be red ball. Who are they gonna be looking for here? Bowling is their leading scorer, he has 18. They're telling him to turn around right now because they want him to look for the ball. Here's Chapapan getting it to Williams. Williams 
and the man behind him lied or deflected it away. He shouted him. Yeah. Then Light's pass is knocked away, intended for one of his teammates, and there's Chapapan. Over to Fuller for a three. Got it. That was Fuller, and that was the way he played ball when he was a member of the Tigers several years ago. 66-65, and we have a good ball game here. The black team has their lead reduced to one. Underneath, and to Boone. Boone has gotten the three-point itch. And another one. <laughs> Jeff Boone has gone off from three-point range. He has 15 points. 69-65. Fuller, uh, he comes back and answers. So, uh, so Fuller said, I'm not going to be outdone, Mr. Boone, and it's 69-68, and we're watching a fun game right now. So the red team back within one, and there's 9-14 on the clock. I mean it, uh, Jeff Boone has gotten the three-point itch, and he's made them go. I, he had um, six when he scored his sixth point. He then started to go to the three. He made it nine, 12, and 15. So according to what I have, he's made three in a row. And may, maybe three out of four. And it's 69, 68. Come back on the court. Basically the same. I, Phil Mond has come in for the black team. He's number five. And we have a ball game. The black team trying to protect a one-point lead with Fran, uh, Clarence Amengo bringing it up. Amengo all the way through, but he couldn't make it at the very last. And a long lead is deflected away by Simpson and picked up by Boone. Now Boone dribbling, Boone dribbling. And we'll have a whistle off his cut to the left side, and he got reached out and fouled by Chapapan. So Chapapan committed the foul. 69-68. So it's Boone again, top of the key, no good. And the rebound is uh, kind of uh, levitated in. That ball was on its end, and Bowling brought it in and gives it off to Fuller. Fuller, who has a couple of threes, sends it inside. Then they dish it around and come out to Chopahan. And on the corner to Bowling. And Bowling has been money today, and he hits a three-pointer and puts the red squad up 70 to 69. So the, the lead back in the possession of the red squad. Down the baseline they go to give it to Boone. Boone from the corner, no. Said he had been three of four, now he's missed his last couple. Down the middle of the lane went bowling and Amengo hit the floor and picked up the offensive foul on that. So the young players watching from Queensboro that are going to be on the court next, the current Tiger squad, watching their coach take a few shots for the team and show them how to play uh, spirited basketball for sure. And let me tell you, from what I've gathered, there are some good young players that have come into Queensboro this year that are going to be part of that current squad. One from Franklin Lane, one from Jamaica High School to go along with some of the players they have from last year. So uh, they should be interesting to watch. All right, they're going to shore up a, a spot down there and give the ball to the black team. And it's 70 to 69, the red team has moved in front. They get it around to Simpson, who can shoot the three, but it jumped out of the basket. Durant has attempted a few of them today. A couple of them fell short. I don't want to remind him of that. But, but that one jumped out of the basket. Here's a pick from Pichardo, and you don't see many of those anymore. 
And Chopahan tried to go around it, lost the ball, but he got it back. Chopahan now from, well, that's from the moon, and it's no good. That was a long three. And down the other end in a hurry and getting foul was the black squad. Domingo taking it hard to the basket again. So it's a 70 to 69 game in favor of the red team. And Domingo's first free throw is good. And what does Carl have? Uh, he has seven points now. Williams 17, Light 16, Boone 15, 71 to 70 is the score now. This is Chopahan, Chopapan turning on the baseline a couple of times and gets it up, missed it. A la former great Bernard King there. A couple of spin moves and then finally went hard. The ball went out of bounds off the black though. Pichardo, a nice move in the lane and squeezes up about an eight footer that he won't get. So the black team a chance to add to their lead. They're up by one and we're down on the 626 mark. And that was a foul as Emengo was going to the basket and Bowling was trying to reach in and strip it away and he committed the foul. You see uh, out there on the court, Simpson, and Mengo and Boone, they were all in the same uh, time period here at Queensboro, so very close. There's a knock away. And Keo, what a nice no-look pass, getting it on the right side to Santos, who puts it in. And now the red team has uh, creeped back into the lead at 72 to 71. Six minutes to go. Turnaround by Light is good. Great turnaround from the baseline there. Almost in the corner when he hit it. 18 points on the fadeaway. 73-72, it's a seesaw ball game. Black team with the lead. They clear it for bowling and he passes it in the middle to Fuller. And tough defense by the uh, black squad and Boone picked it off and leads it ahead at the last moment to Light who put it in. Now pass was almost behind him, but Light hung in and pulled it in and put it in and now it's 75-72. And Jeff was inspired on that pass with his pass. Here's Pachardo against Boone. Red team with just under five minutes to play working on it. Pachardo. This is Bowling, their leading scorer, and Bowling off with that one. It might have been deflected a little bit. Bowling has 21 points. There's a scramble for the loose ball, and they say it's black ball. Bowling not able to add to his point total. Very good day here with 21 points. You can see he's long and lean. And he was a very good player for Tom Sinekson. There's another one for Light, adding on to his total of 22 now, the leading scorer in the game. So it's 77 to 72. See what the red team comes up with. Keo almost fell backwards and was able to put it in the basket, keep his balance. Seven points for Keith Keo. 77-74. Off the light miss, here they come again. Santos, no good. And light clears that rebound. Santos trying to move the game a little bit closer. Great, uh, great game here for the alumni. They've all given it their all. Simpson from outside off target with that three. 
And I have to speak to Chiron after the game. He's been off with the three today. He's a little, a little off. Fuller, no good. And Mon comes into the corner to pick it up. Relays it to an Ango to Boone. This one can hurt if he makes it. He makes it. 18 points on the three for Jeff Boone. And it's 80 to 74 and a timeout. As Jeff Boone is a few points short of the scoring leadership today, which is held by uh, Todd Light with 22 points. Jeff Boone has 18 now. He has a, a surge of three-pointers here in this second half. Well, the game is for fun, but it also can be for pride at times, and you want to come out and give your best performance. And uh, <laughs> Jeff, as I said, is doing construction on bridges and things like that. He's come out, and I guess a lot of that hard work has paid off. <laughs> Jumper outside, no good, and Boone gets the rebound as bowling miss. And the game is starting to slip away from the red team with three minutes on the clock, 3-10. See if they can regather themselves. It's gonna make it tough, though. There was a three for Light. And he has been all over, too. He's got 25 points. So now it's 83-74. Chopapan got it. Ben, a very determined player. Chopapan in the game has, uh, according to my totals, 10 points. 83-77. It's a six-point lead for the Black. They want to use a little clock now before they shoot. They get it to Boone in low. Boone was blocked in there by Keo and got it back and put it up and no good. And the rebound is snatched by Iwu. Fuller with a man on him, no good. 83, 77, and these guys are giving it some effort here down the stretch. Have to applaud all of them. It'll be black ball from the midcourt line. And Mango, Light, Mon, they have Williams out there. They have Boone out there for the black. This has been their best uh, unit, I would say. And Mango and Boone playing together. And Williams has been terrific, and Light has been terrific. Here's the drive all the way in by Williams. He could have put a real dagger into the red team with that, but he missed it. He's bowling, and he scores. 23 points for bowling, and he's going to keep it close, folks. 83 to 79. There's a minute 37 on the clock, and they're within four now. Light trying to take care of that. Boone holds off his defender with one hand, pulls in the rebound and can't score. And he's saying, where's the foul on that? <laughs> he held off Keo. Ball batted away, recovered by the veteran, the most foremost veteran out there, Pichardo. And here's the jump from outside. Fuller won't go. It's Theo to give the ball to. It's going to be black ball. And there's only a minute eight on the clock. And it's 83 now to 79. Kudos to everybody on the court today. They really played hard. Here comes Mingo. And it's not over. After this game, these two teams will join forces and play the current Tiger squad, which is sitting downstairs to our left. They're gonna really use that clock now, of course. There's six on the shot clock, 41 in the game. Williams, who's been a factor all day, can't hit. And Chopapan, trying to get rid of the ball, I believe got fouled down there. Well, maybe there was a timeout before the foul, and I think there was. 83-79, so it'll be red ball. They don't get the foul on that. The timeout was being called. 37.3 to go in the game. It's still doable for the red team, but it's got to be done pretty quickly. 
Now, I don't think they'll go after the three-point shot here. We'll see. They do have a three-point shooter in, in uh, bowling on the court, number one. And then Fuller, number 11, can also shoot it. They're down by four. Let's see what they do. 35 seconds to go in the game. They go inside to Keo. Keo got blocked by Williams. And Joshua Williams punched that ball over to her. Now actually tapped it over the left sideline. Staying with the red team. Shot clock off. 28 seconds to go in the game. Bowling to Fuller for a three. Well, they got one of the two three-point shooters. Missed it. And Chopin got the follow, and he got fouled. They'll score it. Now Ben has 12 points, and he could have made the biggest play in this game, and he can move the red team within one here with a free throw. Fouled by Clarence Amengo on that. And we had to wait and see what the call was going to be, but he used his rather strong body again in there. And he hits the free throw. So now, as Queensboro's alumni game, both alumni on the teams on the court coming down to the wire here. It's 83-82 for the black-clad Queensboro Tigers. The red-clad Queensboro Tigers are behind. Let's see if they stay behind with 20 seconds left. It's been a real pleasure showing up, and it's almost like preseason, of course. Uh, we're even working our way into things uh, for the season ahead. And Mingo will be throwing it in for the black squad, and they will want a foul after a certain amount of time if they don't get the ball, and here is the foul, and Amengo will go to the line, and I talked to the gentlemen about their free throw shooting prowess in their playing days, and as I remember it, Carl Amengo, who's going to the line now, was a pretty good one. Well, they're not going to give the shots to Carl. They're going to give it to Williams. Joshua Williams at the line with a one-point lead for his team, now a two-point lead. 16.8 seconds to go in the ballgame. He looked cool on that one and calm. Let's see about the second one. Oh, you could see that ball moved a little bit as he was getting ready to shoot it, and it's out, and the red team is fouled here. But... No, there's no foul. It's a timeout because there's only two team foul fouls on the home squad. And now the red team will get a chance to tie this game with 15 seconds to go off the timeout. They'll come on and try for their best shot. And they're talking it over with Tom Sinickson, who was coaching the red team against the black team today, the former coach of all of these all of these good buddies. And I, I want to see if they're going to try a three-point shot to win the game here or if they're going to try to tie it. They have Fuller. They have Bowling in there. They can shoot the three. 15.4 seconds to go. The game is on the line once again. 84-82. The red team behind by two throws it away on the inbound. And Williams grabs it at midcourt. The inbound never got in, and Williams will go to the line. He had just put the black team a little further ahead from the free throw line, and he has a little bit of pressure back on his shoulders. But he has come through very well in this game with uh, 18 points, and he makes the first one. Very nice game for Joshua Williams in conjunction with Todd Light. There's a miss, and this will just about do it if Boone can put it in the bucket. He got fouled. It's a three-point lead, and Boone will go back to the line. Final analysis, if they win this game, what won them the game? I don't know. <laughs> they just outplayed the red team at the end by that much. First one is no good on the air ball free throw. It's really hard to be analytical about this, but it's a lot of fun. 
Boone missed his first. Boone has had a big part in it, though. Second one is no good. Jeff Boone come back here, 18 points. And the red turnovers, uh, just to be a little analytical, the red turnovers are killing them down the stretch here. They've turned it over a couple of times. Called another foul there, and Williams are going to line six seconds left. Game's over. First one is good. I think it's over. Williams has 19 points now, and it's 86-82. Second one is no good, but Boone got the rebound, throws it up, and we have had a fun time here. The black team holds on at the end, and they salvage an 86-82 win, but to be honest, down the final uh, 50 seconds of the game, the red team turned the ball over several times, and the red team gave them a chance to take advantage, and the black team did, and they won it 86-82. And now your scoring leaders, before we get ready for the second end of this Alumni Day doubleheader, between the current Tiger squad and the fellas you just saw are on the court. Well, the scoring leadership in this game goes to Eric Light, 25 points for the former Tiger. Joshua Williams had 19. Eric Light, as I said, the 25. We go with uh, Jeff Boone for 18 points. And Carl Lomingo had eight and give Tyron Simpson six points. On the red side, they lose it, but they get 23 points from Anwar Bowling, who turned in a splendid game. They got 13 from Ben uh, Chapapan, and Chapapan uh, really made it a ball game down the end with some key plays. He had 13 points, real rebounds and tough plays inside. Keith Keough had seven for the red team. And they also got five from uh, Michael Bravo. And as we go out of the building, uh, three-point field goals from Junior Fuller, who had uh, two of them, and he had eight points. So a real fun game. Black team holds on to win. And now more, uh, more fun coming up as the current Tigers will try their hand against these uh, sturdy veterans. Joe Massey in today for, um, for my uh, buddy David Russell, who is out sick, and we'll be back with that second end of the doubleheader.